What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and I'm back. <sighs> Feels good, man. I'm good. I hope you're doing good. And we're about to have a good time, man. We going in. We got for GR, we got Trunks joining the party. I got my Dragon Ball going. I ain't playing games. I ain't playing no games. We're going in. We are going in. Oh man! Dragon Ball Super Superhero. First of all, let's start off with a spoiler free review. Is this movie good? Absolutely. What would I give it rated out of 10? I would give this movie a 10 out of 10. This is the perfect Dragon Ball movie. If you like Dragon Ball just for the fights, then it's a decent movie. It's good. It's okay. But if you like Dragon Ball for the characters, the interactions, the world of Dragon Ball, and the fights, and the world building, showing us more of the lore, bringing up more of the potential of Dragon Ball and what is in the world of Dragon Ball, what it could potentially be, then this movie is a 10 out of 10. It is excellent because that's what it was. In Dragon Ball Super Broly, that movie was more of a story reboot for Broly. Amazing character, um, like a movie based or with the fundamental of character development. A character based story with incredible action. More focused on action and fighting. This is more focused on the character Gohan. The character of Pan. The Red Ribbon Army. Piccolo. Um, Capsule Core. Um... You know, West City, as I said, Bulma, uh, just it, it magnifies the entire world of Dragon Ball. It's incredible, man. And I do like what they did with Gohan, right? They made Gohan a character that was different to Goku and Vegeta, whereas Goku has got, you know, his... Ultra Instinct going on, Vegeta has been training with the God of Destruction and the Angel, so he's developing in his own way. You've got Gohan, who is now different because he is more of question mark power, ability unlock. He was the strongest character in Dragon Ball Z at the end, the, sing the most powerful single entity. In Dragon Ball, it was Gohan. No one could touch him. He was literally untouchable in that he only lost to Boo when Boo fused. If you take away all the fusions and you just date a one pure entity, Gohan was the strongest. So it was it's always been sad to me that they abandoned Gohan since well, if you watch Dragon Ball GT, even though Dragon Ball GT is not canon. Right, but you still live through that era, so you have that embedded in your brain. And then when you see Dragon Ball Super, it just compounds that fact that Gohan is a character that they don't really care about. They don't really focus on that character. He's like a teacher or something, he, or a professor. He doesn't care about nothing. All he cares about is his family and, um, you know, making sure that his family don't want for anything. Providing for his family, that's it. But with this, they show Gohan and bring him up to speed with Vegeta and Goku through his ability. Through what Gohan is. From the beginning of Gohan, he has always been a character that can break through the boundaries of power scaling. When he was a kid, he had no business being as powerful as he was when he got angry 
He had no business being as powerful as he was, and then his power would just vanish because it wasn't really his potential, it was just a question mark ability inside of him. Because in this movie, you clearly see that Gohan is not... He is not really trained powerful, like trained the way Goku and Vegeta do. They consistently fight, they are training, they're getting damaged, then they heal and they get stronger after they almost die. Gohan is not like that and they really showed that in this movie and I don't, I mean I get it, that's the character of Gohan, you saw it when he was a kid, you saw it when he was a teen when he fought Cell, you saw it when he um, fought against the Margins, the Boos, the Boo Saga, you've seen it, so when you see in this movie Gohan go to some next level of craziness, it's believable. And then they show you a little bit of Pan. And Pan! We're finally getting more of Pan. I don't really like Dragon Ball GT. But Pan was the best character by far in that movie. And in this movie, she's even more likeable in this movie than she was in GT. I am so happy. And they kind of are showing Pan. Like, they don't emphasise on her too much. But you do see she's talented so that's going to be her differential to the other saiyans and half human half saiyans because pan is basically potential you see she learns to fly she learns to adapt she learns to fight like when she trained piccolo is training her like really really quickly so in summary if you want just pure fighting this is not really the movie for you stick to the manga the manga is non-stop fighting 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 hardly any story fighting fighting that's the reason i don't want to read the, the comic book because i i don't really care too much to be honest to you to see just constant fights after fights after fights i like story i like character development i like character interactions that's the kind of thing i'm into that's why i love animes like i'm a slime you know, I got reincarnated as a slime and Overlord and, you know, the original Bleach from back in the day, the Soul Society saga and all those type of animes because the character interactions, the story, the world building and the frivolous character conversations. That's what I loved about those anime. That's what I liked about Dragon Ball. If you actually go back and watch Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, it wasn't just going from fight to fight to fight. It was a lot of story, a lot of character development. And it was it was very character driven, if you think about it. The only thing that was annoying was the fact that was, you always knew that it was always going to be Goku and nobody else. Other than that, Dragon, this movie, it was like watching an incredible Dragon Ball Z movie. Everything you love in Dragon Ball put into a movie, that's what um, Dragon Ball Super is. So, I would definitely recommend you go watch it. I would give that a 10 out of 10. And, um, yeah. Now we're going to go into a little bit more details. So that was the spoiler free review. If you want to hear more of what I'm going to say, stick around. Um, I don't have too much to add to it, to be honest with you. But, um, you know me, I go on quite a bit because I like to talk. And I like my details. So, yep, we're going to go more into the story of Dragon Ball now. All right. So, yeah, as I was saying before, like, you know, that was the longest spoiler-free review I've ever done, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, and the thing that I loved about this movie was they kind of showed you West City. Like, wow! They showed you how the Red Ribbon Army has been around in the shadows but they've still been there it shows you how big capsule corp is it's the most well they didn't actually say west city they did say the world it is the biggest corporation in the world that's what they did say that exactly the world not west city whole world so 
you know, and you see Goku and Fujita are not really in this movie. They are in the movie, but they are training with Beerus and the Angels, right? So it makes sense. Piccolo tries to get a hold of them. He can't get a hold of them. Goku and Fujita are off doing Goku and Fujita things, and it makes perfect sense. The way they did the story is shockingly character world accurate. I really don't understand it. Because when a studio does a movie, they just get a writer, people to do the story. They don't really know the intricacies of the characters. They've watched it. They know about Dragon Balls. But there's a lot of character assassination in these type of movies in this one every single character was true to themselves the way gohan harnessed his power in this movie accurate as i said gohan from a child he's always been a character that has able to reach a level of godly power out of his emotions out of his rage out of the infinite depths of his potential where they say humans can do the most incredible things. And then you have the power of the Saiyans who have the ability to do incredible things. And then you mix it together, you got Gohan. And he sees it when he was a kid. You saw what he was able to do when he was actually on Namek. He actually did a lot of work on Namek. You know, when he was um, when he was talking about Raditz, rat he injured Raditz in the... The Saiyan Saga, the very beginning, when Raditz came, the beginning of Dragon Ball Z. Again, when he was a teen, and he was training, and he got level 2, he was the first of the Saiyans to get level 2. And it was even higher than level 2, actually. Right? And when he fought in the Boo Saga, the Margin Saga, Mr. Gohan. Gohan ended Dragon Ball Z as the strongest single character in that whole world. So it shows you how powerful the character is. And when he gets his transformation in this movie, that transformation was ridiculous. Ridiculous. He looked like Gohan when he was a teen, but just adult and some next god mode. What is that? And it makes sense because you remember when Gohan went mystic mode, he was like normal Gohan but he went past Super Saiyan like that's I don't even know what to say bro and then when he and his super he went like because the final boss was um Cell Max right because Red Ribbon Army had come back and um, it was led by and uh, well the person that created um Cell Max was Dr I think it was Hedro Hedo or something like that right and he made I think it was Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 essentially and they were like two androids but they were essentially superheroes right like because Dr. Hedro he wasn't a bad dude he wasn't bad he wasn't bad he was just thought he was fighting for righteousness and he wanted a purpose I actually the what's so funny is I did not like him from the beginning. From the moment I saw him, I did not like him. He didn't show an aura or a... He didn't... He was. I didn't perceive him as a villain, right? It was just a character coming from a different perspective that had to do what he had to do to get from A to B. That was it. And they came after Piccolo. And even when they came after Piccolo... They were talking to Piccolo like he was King Piccolo, like from Dragon Ball, as in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, before Dragon Ball Z, right? So you could already tell that they were lied to, right? Because they were just trying to manip manipulate them. I think it was Magenta or Magenta, the people that are running Red Ribbon Army. Right, there was like two of them. There was Carmine, I think it was Carmine. There was two people in there. And they were wearing like red suits that you've seen in the um, trailers. And one guy's always standing on a step because he's so small, right? 
and they look like Dragon Ball villains. That's why they, the way they, even the aesthetics of the characters match the original Dragon Ball Red Ribbon Army, and then Dragon Ball Z to Dragon Ball Super with the characters evolution. This movie was the perfect Dragon Ball man. And you see all the interactions with Piccolo and Gohan and Pan and Goku and Vegeta and Beerus and you see Trunks and you see um, Goten, you see even Krillin is there, Android 18 is there, Bulma is there and they all have all these interactions and you see Bulma, she actually has been collecting the Dragon Balls, I mean being the most um, essentially who owns the most powerful company in the entire world right but Bulma is still Bulma she's still adorable she's still cool she's still an adventurer she still looks young and they explain why she still looks young because she uses the dragon balls to make she's made, she's been making wishes this whole time Bulma has been using the dragon balls collecting them and making wishes like and uh, make her bum like more tighter um, make her eyelashes a little bit bigger and um, she's got like some maybe she's got some wrinkles make the wrinkles like disappear like no more wrinkles around my eyes right so she's been doing little wishes like that and when Piccolo yeah it was Piccolo said you've been summoning the dragon and making wishes like that and it is so Bulma the character, the way they understand the characters in this movie is insane to me. The fact that Vegeta and Goku missed out on a threat to Earth from Cell Max and the way they showed it made perfect sense. And even the fact that Gohan, his fighting instinct was completely gone because after Piccolo had fought he had fought, I think it was Gamma, Gamma won, after he had fought him, he made it look like he got killed, and then Gamma won, left to go back to Red Ribbon Army to report he'd finished Piccolo, King Piccolo, right, the villain, right, and Piccolo followed them, got to the Red Ribbon base, Disguised himself as one of the Red Ribbon Army soldiers, went into the conference room, listened into their conversation, right? The plan was basically to get um, Pan, basically get Gohan, right? Because Gohan is the reason that the whole Red Ribbon Army got finished and their dreams with Dr. Jero and the androids and everything that it failed was because of Gohan. He destroyed Cell and everything. And the way they could get Gohan was to get his daughter. Pan, hold her to ransom and get um, Gohan and then have Gamma 1 and 2 and Cell Max kill him off. And Piccolo actually was trying to get Gohan to train. Gohan's like, I'm busy man, I've got stuff to do, I've got a lecture in the morning tomorrow. And so Piccolo just, alright, went, saw what they were doing, actually helped them kidnap Pan because they he knew that they got Gohan. They couldn't get in contact with Goku and Vegeta. So he Piccolo realized it's up to me and Gohan to do this. And he actually got the Dragon Balls, made a wish, and he wished for the dragon to unlock his potential the same way the dragon unlocked Gohan's potential and made him Mr. Gohan in Dragon Ball Z. And Piccolo got this godlike transformation. Godlike transformation. And he is orange. And he is brolic, man. Like he's mass. Like he looks like he looked like a tank. That transformation was incredible, bro. Incredible. Oh, this movie was too much, man. It was too much. And then the cell fight, the cell max fight. It made sense, man. It made sense. It was so good. It was so... I mean... If it was Cell... I mean, if it was Perfect Cell, then the movie couldn't have been the way it was. 
it would have to have been literally a fighting movie because the only thing that was stopping Cell Max from being as godlike as Perfect Cell was the fact that he's not Perfect Cell and he didn't have any mental faculties he was just a raging berserker so there was no intelligence there was no tactics there was nothing it was just a colossal beast of astronomical power that is literally it and when gohan transformed and he I, what is that i don't know what that is that is mystic gohan perfect perfect old um Ultimate Gohan, perfect Gohan form. Perfect Mystic Gohan. I don't know, man. And he had like white hair and red eyes. And like even when he was like, when he transformed, and he even did he did the for his super, it was Maso Masenko. It was Piccolo's special beam cannon. Stop it. It wasn't even um, Kamehameha. I love that. I love that. The fact that he used Masenko. That is his... That, essentially, Piccolo is his father. Gohan is his dad, the one that gave him life. But Piccolo is the one that loves him. Piccolo is the one that raises him. He's the one that has nurtured him, has trained him. It's all Piccolo. And even the reason Gohan got his abilities was basically, like the new transformation, was because he thought Piccolo died. And then that just, it, he switched. He switched, and even when I said, when he was doing everything, it's like, the one with in Super Broly, when um, Super Saiyan Blue, Fusion, Gogeta, did his super and they and, and Broly did his super and it crashed and it shattered reality and it was all type of crazy rainbow effects and stuff like that. This one was basically the same. I think it was actually more godly. Go it looked like Gohan's power was more godly than Super Saiyan Blue. Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. I don't know the power levels because you know you know what the power scaling is in Dragon Ball. It's all over the place, but you know it's Gohan reaching a new level, and it is just pure power. It's not based off any training or anything like that, and you can tell it isn't because there was a lot of scenarios where Piccolo was trying to get Vegeta and um, Gohan to fight to just let go and be him, his self with his pure power and he couldn't. The only way Piccolo could do that was by tricking Gohan to make him think Pan was in danger. Like there was one instance where Piccolo was holding Pan in his hand and Pan and doing that and Pan was actually holding Piccolo's hand. She wasn't he wasn't grabbing her. He wasn't forcing her. He wasn't hurting her. Right? But he told her play along so that um your daddy will help and um, save you. Right, and then he did that, and he was pretending like she was hurt and stuff like that, and that made Gohan just switch and then go into level two, and that's when he was fighting against Gamma number one and Gamma number two, and it just showed you that Gohan's abilities comes from his emotions, it comes from his infinite well of power, because if Gohan was trained, he would have been able to sense that that is Piccolo, but he couldn't even sense it was Piccolo, even when they came to um get Gohan to tell him that we kidnapped your daughter and we are going to hurt her unless you come to where we want you to come and we're going to do some stuff right and Gohan basically went along with them but it was not really going along with them it's because he didn't know where the red ribbon army was so he had to comply but his old intention was always to like just burst out of there and smash everybody but one of the people that went to get Gohan was Piccolo, disguised as one of the members of the Red Ribbon Army. Piccolo was there, disguised. Just a couple centimetres 
away from Gohan. Gohan couldn't even tell it was Piccolo. And it just shows you a sense of how far Gohan has fallen. But in terms of his potential, because of the cheat code of Mystic Gohan, the Mystic mode that he's unlocked, he's never really out of it. And I love that man, the emphasis, because like even there was a game called Dragon Ball Fighter Z, right? And Gohan has got a super where he goes straight into Mystic mode. It requires seven super bars, yeah? Seven meters of set. If you get like these super bars, it goes up to seven. Gohan has to use all seven of his supers and he goes like level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, level six, level seven. And when he does that, he becomes like one of the best characters in that game. He literally can cancel special move into special move into special move. He gets stronger. All his attacks become stronger. He becomes faster. He could do combos that no one else could do or what he can normally he normally could never do so that's a reoccurring thing with Gohan throughout the whole Dragon Ball universe when he taps into his power in every medium in the games in the, and out in the anime you don't know what's gonna happen I love that in this mo uh, movie about Gohan this movie is excellent man I love it for me, movie of the year of 2022 so far, we're in August, come to the end of August. Um, the perfect Dragon Ball movie for me. For me, it was better than um, the Broly movie, right? And I love the Broly movie, man. I love that movie so much. But for me, this movie is better for the simple fact that the movie made me smile. It had the blend of characters and interactions and story and world building and lore building and character conversations and interaction. You had to see the characters, hear the characters. It had excellent fights and the story and the characters did not betray themselves. There was no character assassination from anybody. Even when you saw, I mean, Goten and Trunks maybe weren't anything in this movie but they were there and it's Goten and Trunks right so it was just fun to see and uh, <sighs> I'm happy I'm so happy this movie exists I cannot wait to own this movie and have it in my house and I can watch it at my leisure incredible and it changes everything we'll see where this fits into the manga I don't think it's going to fit into the manga at all to be honest with you I think it's just going to be a movie thing right and look if they're gonna do enough a couple movies Dragon Ball is big business right now massive in the year of 2022 Dragon Ball Super is massive right so they can clearly do movies upon movies the only thing I will say is this Dragon Ball movie has been in production for a long time it's not like they started making this movie after the Broly movie I heard they were actually making this movie before they started working on the Super Broly movie I mean and it shows because the whole movie was CG Let, I'll be honest with you you don't really notice it's CG the CG and the graphics in the movie are incredible. The flights, the one take of them coming out of a building and flying, it's incredible. They do such tiny little intricate things, like the character is walking inside the building, right? They enter like downstairs, they go into a back alleyway, then they climb upstairs, they go to the top of a roof, and it's all done in one take, and then they fly out of the city and then into somewhere else, and it's all one take. The camera just follows them going down, and they just do things that they normally you'd never see in CG or in a movie where everything is that was literally one take. And a camera just zooming in and zooming out. This movie had so much. And the actual graphics were 
mind blowing. Like, I could talk about this movie forever. This movie was absolutely incredible. There was an end credit scene where Fujita and Goku are fighting. Well, they started fighting toward, at the beginning of the movie, if you want to see it. And the fight finished at the end of the movie. Where Vegeta beat Goku in a fight. Vegeta actually beat Goku. And even Broly was watching. And he was feeling it. Even um, Broly was emotional. For Vegeta beating Goku. I really don't understand how the studio got this movie so right. It's like they understand the characters. I don't understand it. Like, they've not done this in movies before. The only time I, I could say they only, it seemed like they clearly understand the characters is in Dragon Ball Broly. In Dragon Ball Broly, it was abnormal at how good the character representation was in that movie it was ridiculous the characters were so accurate to they didn't betray their characters there was no character assassination and this movie was the same the way the characters are in dragon ball in dragon ball z is consistent in it and what kills is because they're not consistent in dragon ball super the tv show but in the movie it's like it continues from the end of Dragon Ball Z skipped a few years and here we are now it's crazy so yeah to me the perfect Dragon Ball movie the incredible transformation of Gohan and Piccolo Vegito actually beat Goku in a fair fight in a complete fair fight, no outside interference. Oh yeah, they did fight with, there was no key blasts, there was no Super Saiyan, it was just martial arts versus martial arts. So it shows that Vegeta is the better martial artist than Goku. That in itself makes me wanna cry, man. This, if you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. But as I said in the beginning, if you want just fights, only fights, yeah then the manga and that's the reason i don't read the manga because the manga is just fight after fight after fight after fight i'm bored of it i need more i need more characters i need more world building more lore more character conversations and interactions that's what i like that's why to see they show west city they show bulma they show um the actual Capsule Corp Corporation, they show the Red Ribbon Army, they show Gohan, they show Videl, they show Pan, they show Trunks and Goten and Android 18 and Piccolo and, you know, everybody, Krillin, Yajirobe, Dende, the Dragon Balls. I'm so happy. Love the movie. Absolutely worth you watching it. 10 out of 10 movie. And let's just see what's going to happen with... Now Gohan has got this transformation. Ultimate, mystic, perfect form Gohan. What's going to happen? Are they going to introduce it into the comic books? Doubt it. Is it lore? We'll see. Right? If it comes into the comic books or they mention it in any way... It's law. If it isn't, I don't know. Um, and that's the one thing that I am conflicted about. About is it law? Where does it fit? I've got theories, but I don't know. So um, I want to say thank you for, for watching. Thank you to Keith Cole. Yeah, he's got a YouTube channel, amazing YouTube channel where he talks about life and uh, Funkos and just life and how to cope with life and. Um, inspirational uh, videos and um, you know he does like questions and theories about like the comic book world and you know from Marvel stuff and just everything in general really so if you give his channel um, a, a, a sub 
that would be appreciated because he supports this channel he's the unofficial official manager of this channel so there we go warriors you guys are amazing thank you once again take care stay blessed and um thank you i appreciate you laters